We're going to have a look at uh, some tips on how to troubleshoot SAML 2.0 issues in a an Access Manager, NetIQ Access Manager environment. NetIQ Access Manager can actually be set up as either an identity server or a SAML service provider. The identity provider is typically responsible for authenticating the user and generating an assertion over to the service provider. The service provider, on the other hand, is typically responsible for generating an authentication request over to the identity provider and consuming the assertion that comes back from that identity provider. So in the NAM environment, you can go into the IDP cluster configuration SAML2 and you can define uh, identity providers and service providers. The identity providers here are where NAM in this case is going to act as a service provider, is going to generate the authentication request and get the assertion from. In the case of the service provider configuration, NAM is going to be the identity provider. So we would typically expect an authentication request from the service provider, and we will generate a corresponding assertion back to the, ser to the service provider. When you've configured these, the first thing you need to do is make sure that the, the service provider or identity provider has initialized successfully. If it hasn't, then you don't have that trust relationship, and typically any SAML interaction is going to fail. And the most common message being a 300.10.10.08 untrusted provider message. So in order to check whether the service provider or identity provider is initialized correctly, we're going to go and look at how to enable logging. So again, you go to the IDP cluster configuration, you go on to the general auditing and logging page. And in here, you have a few options. By default, file logging is disabled. You go in and enable it. If you enable the echo to console flag, it'll write the output to the Catalina out file. If echo to console is disabled, it's just going to create an XML file in this particular directory here, where you'll have the logs set. Most importantly, this is where we need to focus. So for the SAML2 protocol information to get logged to the Catalina out file, we're going to have to enable the SAML2 switch and set it to debug. So an authentication request, an authentication response, an artifact resolution request, all these protocol informations will get logged to the Catalina out file. In the case of the, uh, of the IDP server processing the request, identifying a user, authenticating user, all that is logged at the application level. So set the application tab set to debug. If you have any issues with attributes, so attribute uh, matching, uh, ascending attributes within an assertion, you'll need to make sure that the web server consumer and provider flags are both set to, to debug. Once that's done, uh, apply the change, update the IDP server, and get back to duplicating your, your SAML, SAML problem. So when we have that, we can go back to uh, the log file. Here's the Catalina log file. The first thing I mentioned last time was when you have applied an USP or an IDP server, make sure that they've loaded. You can actually do a search for loaded trusted provider. And in here you'll see, for example, uh, loaded trusted provider, uh, URN Federation Microsoft Online SAML2. So basically this is the SAML2 service provider that I have here. Uh, you want to make sure that it's successfully loaded it and there are no error messages, exceptions. Typically, if you're importing the metadata and you don't have, uh, you haven't imported the trusted root of the signing certificate, then it'll fail to load and you'll get a, um, an exception related to certificates. So always go and make sure that your trusted provider is loaded successfully. The next thing to do is, and again, it depends on the tools. There's a few different tools you have available to you. But if we'll look at a, a couple here, we'll look at a Firefox plugin called SAML Tracer. And this is actually capable of logging SAML requests. So here I have a, a sample uh, SAML SP. I'm going to generate an authentication request here into my IDP server. So here I've generated the request over to my IDP server. If I go back over to my log, I should see there a SAML tag. And I can go in here and I can actually view the state of the authentication request that's come over to me. So I can then typically log in. This is a customized login page. I'll log in here with my username and password. And I will click the login button. Hopefully my credentials be validated and I'll get redirected back to my SP. And hopefully I'll get, there we go. I've single signed onto my SAML SP. And here, if I look here again, 
over here on the right hand side I've got my SAML tag and I can see the authentication response which is the assertion so in here I get to see uh, it's generated an assertion with a status of success um, I've got an attribute statement down here with a number of different attributes etc so in this scenario here everything's worked fine but what if it hasn't worked correctly well a, you need to make sure that we've actually generated the authentication request from the SP into the IDP server. And again, you can go back into the log files and we'll go down to the very bottom and I'll search my way for authentication request. And I should hopefully see the authentication request that I just sent there. There it is. So this corresponds to what we saw in the SAML tracer log files. And you can walk through this. So for example, in this scenario here, the Java thread here is exec01. So we could theoretically do a search on exec01. And we'll, we'll go all the way down. So this is just the handling of the authentication request. So we handle the authentication request. We should then execute. Again, there's just a lot of logging because I'm in debug mode. So I'm going to go down here. Now I can see here I've actually started to execute an authentication contract. Uh, which in turn executes an authentication method. So this is where I should theoretically be prompted for my credentials. Uh, I'll then see if I search for post, I'll see a post message. Oops, let me just work my way back. Post. Uh, okay, this is where I post my credentials over here. So at this point here, I should see a reference to ncashel coming in, which is the user that I actually added here so let me just search for ncashel so here it's this is with the application set to debug it's doing an ldap lookup it identifies the user and then hopefully once i've identified the user i'm just going to go down and i'll just generate a, an assertion in response uh, so i'll go down and in the log files i should see my saml assertion which is here so again in the case where this fails, you follow the authentication request, you make sure that the authentication succeeded, uh, and then once the authentication succeeded, you should see a corresponding assertion being generated. If the assertion is not generated, it may be that we're trying to populate certain fields within the assertion, attribute statements, name identifiers, and we can't handle that. And typically you'll find an exception in there. One last point is if you have a Fiddler trace, Fiddler has a built-in uh, SAML decoder. So if you go in here, for example, this is, let's go back here, this is a post, uh, and I'm posting a request over, a SAML request over to NIDP SAML 2 SSO. So that's a, typically an authentication request going to a single sign-on profile on the IDP server. So if I cut and paste that, uh, let's go back here, if I cut and paste that SAML request, to the end, uh, Fiddler has a built-in decoder. Let me just go back here. There we go. So I can select the sample request parameter. I right click and I send to text wizard. And text wizard actually has a transformer in there which takes the base64 encoded sample request and it logs the output which is uh, an output that we can actually understand. And sure enough, there is our authentication request that we're sending over there. Mm -hmm.